In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up NeoVim for Lua development. So as always, you'll be able to find an explanation and all the configuration over on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, I'm going to show you guys and kind of give a demo of what you're going to be getting uh, from this first, and then I'm going to get in how to configure it all. All right, so the first thing I want to show is autocomplete. So if we start typing local, you'll see that local shows up here as well as some other things like snippets and you know whatever else, right? Just saw probably that um, diagnostic right there, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you guys is that you're going to have access to the Vim Global here. So if I do Vim and then I, you know, try and go through everything here, we'll have access to that. And you can see down here at Diagnostics is, you know, we have access to that Vim Global. So if you're doing some development on your NeoVim config or something like that, or you're trying to build a plugin, uh, that should be pretty helpful for you. Uh, the next thing that we'll get into is, uh, I guess, diagnostics. So if I get rid of this, or if I just like try to write like a print statement here, um, you see we get that doc here, by the way. But and then I go like this, and say I get rid of some piece of it there. It says missing symbol, right? Um, like if I just put all this here, it'll say missing symbol, letting me know that I need to close it, right? Uh, so we'll get rid of that. And then we'll open up some more diagnostics here. If you want to cycle through diagnostics, and let me turn this on so you can see what I'm typing, but if you want to cycle through diagnostics, um, I have Control N set up and Control P set up. Um, also, I'm going to leave a link um, at the top of the video somewhere um, showing you how to set up native LSP. It's the video that's right before this one in my playlist, uh, but you're going to want to set up all like the basics for LSP. It's really just like two plugins, one for uh, completion and the other one for the LSP config. Um, all right, so we'll get rid of that. We'll get, keep that out of here. Uh, the next thing that we're going to show is the hover doc. So if I um, start hovering over top of things with capital K, uh, a few of them have some interesting information like this one and this one. A few of them don't really have super interesting ones, but at least let you know that this is a local binary and that it's a string. Uh, the next thing we'll do is do GD on top of this and you can see like you know throughout this buffer all the places where that is or where it's defined right so it's defined here and here and there right those are all the possible places that can be defined we can close that with C close here to get rid of the quick fix window um, you can also see we're pointing to the Vim runtime for Lua and Vim runtime uh, Lua Vim LSP here. So all this stuff right here, uh, you can see where that is if we do echo here at the bottom and then I do Vim or whoops, Vim runtime. You'll see it's in user local share and Vim runtime. So if you wanted to go look at those libraries, you can go check them out. Um, so, so we're gonna have them included too. So like I said, you can like, you know, do that Vim uh, development work if you want to, if you're working on something um, that isn't like, that's actually related to your Vim config and not just Lua development in general. Um, yeah, so the other thing that I'm gonna show too um, during the configuration step is like why this is all the way that it is. I'm using this file, this is actually the configuration, but I'm also using this file as kind of like a, you know, the demo as well. Um, so that's pretty much everything I think I wanted to show with that. Oh yeah, the last thing is gonna be formatting. So if I go like this, right, and I put that there and then I save the file, you can see that I just formatted everything. So if we put something weird uh, here, right, and then I save, there you go, we got auto format. All right, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to show. So now let's get into some of the configuration. Uh, like I said, you're gonna wanna check out my last video on how to set up native LSP and all that stuff. Um, it's not super hard to do, but you're probably gonna wanna check that out. So even if you don't plan on doing any like regular Lua development and you're only using it for NeoVim, it's you know a good idea to set it up, right? Because uh, NeoVim is gonna be moving heavily towards uh, towards Lua scripting and away from Vim script, right? So you're probably gonna want this just if you're working on your own config or maybe if you're creating a plugin or something. Uh, one reason is, oh yeah, well, I, I just kind of went over that right there. Um, and yeah, so let's get started going into some of the installation instructions. So I'm gonna open up another terminal here. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is install this thing called Ninja. I don't even, I didn't even look up what Ninja does. I'm assuming it compiles things. Um, but yeah, so you're just gonna want it. Uh, you're gonna need it for the installation here. 
So install Ninja, if you're on Arch, you can do this. If you're on Mac, you can just brew install it, um, Ubuntu. There you go, there's your commands. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is clone down the repo. So the first command I have here is CD into your NeoVim config space, right? So if we go into config, config, and then NVim, there we go. So if we go in here, you'll notice I I'm cloning this thing down here with my config and you can put it wherever you want, but just make sure that where you put it, um, you know, you're actually uh, pointing to it here with the root path, right? You'll notice that on Mac, I'm saying like, okay, users, user.config, nvim, Lua language server, right? And on Linux, I'm saying like home, and you can see like if I do PWD here, uh, home, chris.config, nvim, this is home, uh, user, I'm getting the user from an environment variable up here using a built-in uh, vim Lua function here. And uh, so then it's like home, chris, config, nvim, Lua language server. This is home, chris, .config, nvim, and then clone the Lua language server right there, right? Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do, and I already ran all these commands, so I already have it, so you obviously cloned it, CD inside of it, and then run git submodule update in it recursive, um, and this will get all the submodules and kind of get you primed and ready for um, you know compiling the binary. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you'll be probably, you know, inside of the Lua language server, Lua language server. You'll see this directory called third here. You're gonna to wanna to CD into third, into Lua make, run that ninja command. So if we go into third, whoops, third, and then Lua make, and then if we see inside of this ninja directory here, we see linux.ninja, macos.ninja, and then mingw, Dot ninja, then msvc. One of these is probably for Windows, and the other one I have no idea what it's for. Um, but yeah, so these are the ones I'm basically supporting for this video, at least. All right, so you're basically going to want to run ninja on that. Um, you know, just run these commands kind of in order, you know, cd dot dot, and then go back and do lua make rebuild. All right. Once you're done with that, you already have the language server, so you have access to the binary, you should be good to go. Um, you don't really need to do anything else for that language server. The last thing you're gonna need to do is just create the configuration, and that's what this file is right here. So I also have it on the blog here. Um, so what are you gonna wanna do with this file? This is just a Lua file, so just create any Lua file, you can call it whatever, the, you, know, whatever you want. Um, and let's see, where am I? Yeah, so, and then in your init.vim, just bring it in with Lua file and then point to its full path, right? Uh, so this one's called, I'm calling mine Lua-ls.lua, that's this guy right here. Um, you can ignore really everything else in this file. If, you know, your init.vim could be one line and it's just this pretty much, right? Um, so, you know, Lua file, this is just lets you execute a Lua script file, like once, right? And that's what that does. So if we gf, we just go right back to that. All right, um, now I wanna do control O to go back over here. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all you're gonna have to do to bring this in. Uh, let me talk about what's actually in the configuration here. So this is the user, I went over that earlier, so it's actually getting the user. So if we go down here and we echo dollar sign user, it says Chris, it'll say your name if you do that. So then we're gonna take that, and this is how you do string concatenation in Lua, you just put these two dots here. And so we're just gonna concatenate that and point to the binary this way. We'll be doing that supporting Mac. We're gonna check if you're on a Mac system or if you're on Unix, and if you're not, I'm just gonna print unsupported. Um, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is run this command here. So, you know, just that's what we defined up here. Um, and then just set up some settings. Uh, so you can set up like your version, um, I guess, uh, I guess this is for the Lua path or something like that. I'm not really sure what I would do with that. Uh, Package.path, not sure what that is, but I guess it doesn't matter. Um, and then, you know, this is for the global Vim and this stuff down here is to, you know, source those libraries. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole configuration for this. After getting this set up and, you know, in, you're good to go. You have autocomplete, you have diagnostics, you have all the good stuff, right? You don't really need anything else. Now, the rest of the video is going to be going over, what the heck? 
Okay. Uh, the rest of the video is going to be going over setting up formatting, and this is a little, you know, more difficult to do. This language server doesn't come with formatting out of the box, uh, so if you just want that part and you don't really care about formatting, then you're already done. You don't need to do anything else. All right. So for the people who are sticking around, let's get started on formatting. So some Neko language server that doesn't support it out of the box, we can install it. And we can install a formatter, like a particular Lua formatter, and then we can use the EFM language server to support it. The EFM language server is a general purpose language server. It's kind of like this one, but you can you know put whatever binary you want in there, right? Um, so let's go take a look. Well, first let's install the formatter. First thing you need to do is install Lua Rocks. Uh, so I left a link here in the blog to go install that. Once you have Lua Rocks, you should be able to do like Lua Rocks, right? And then like you'll have this binary. See, if I just type that, I get like a bunch of stuff, right? The next thing you're gonna wanna do is just run Lua Rocks install and Lua Formatter. I left a link to the Lua Formatter repo at the bottom here. Uh, so you can check that out. Um, bu -bu -bum. So that's Lua Rocks, that's the formatter. Now we have the formatter, so we have, after running that command, you'll have Lua, and it takes a minute to like compile it and all. But uh, Lua, what's it called? I think it's just called Lua Format. Yeah, and we'll just do help. See, and you can see like all of the uh, stuff here, right? Like all of the different things you can do for formatting, all the different like, you know, ways to format. You can kind of do it however you want. So we have access to that binary now. The next thing that we're gonna need to do is set up the EFM language server. Um, and for the EFM language server, we're going to um, need to, if you're on Linux, you're gonna need to do go to set it up. You're gonna need go to set it up. And if you're on Mac, you can just brew install EFM server. So if you're on Mac, you have it easy. If you're on Linux, then you're gonna need to pay attention to this next part. So just install Go, you should just have the Go binary, right? And if, you know, just go figure out how to install Go. After that, uh, what I suggest doing is, what we'll, Go will do is it will put a directory, a Go directory right here, right? And that's very annoying and I don't like it. So uh, let's get rid of that. And what we're gonna do instead, or at least what I'm gonna do, if you don't care, then it doesn't matter, but you're still gonna need to do this other part. What you're gonna to need to do is you see these two things here. We have, we're pointing to the binaries for Go. And I'm also changing my Go path to dot local Go just to kind of get it out of, you know, my home directory, uh, visibly out of my home directory. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, this path here. And so you're gonna, when, I, when I'm adding something to the path here, I'm just saying like, okay, now I, I can run it as a binary, right? So I can run, like CD is in my path, right? LS is in my path. Uh, that Lua formatter is in my path, right? Because I can run the binaries. So that's what that means, right? Um, so we're gonna add all the binaries that you download with Go onto your path, right? Again, if you're on Mac, you don't have to do all this, but if you're on Linux, then you have to go through that pain. Um, after that, just run go get uh, the language server, EFM language server. And now if you have it set up the way that I do, you're gonna go go, you're gonna go bin. All right, and now we see that the EFM language server is there. If it if you put it in your path, then you should just have access to it like this. And now we have the EFM language server. Okay, so now this is a very general, this is a very powerful language server um, that you can have. Uh, right now, I just have it set up for Lua formatting, but I'll probably do a bunch of different languages formatting through this. It's kind of like an alternative to Ale almost, uh, the asynchronous, asynchronous linting engine for any of them. Uh, maybe I'll do one on that in the future, but I think this is good enough. So, all right, so, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create another Lua file called general, and we're gonna put this stuff in it. And we're gonna say file type for Lua. We're gonna say document formatting will be true. Uh, root marker is just when you see a git folder and then we're just going to say for this particular language this is what we want to run now this is like a format command there's other commands you can put in here but this is the format command so you're just going to want to put lua format flag i you know you can copy this but i'll go over some of the things that we have here we have um 
no keep simple function on one line. That's like, uh, so really small functions would be on one line. I just kind of didn't like that. It didn't look very clean in one of the files I was doing. No break after operator. You can like, you can change this around. Like you, you might like different things, you know, and if you saw earlier, you can pass all different kinds of arguments. Just run Lua format help and then you can see what you can pass it. So yeah, that's pretty much all you're gonna have to do to get formatting working. Uh, after you have this set up, we'll come back over here and I'll show you what you can do. So let's kind of, you know, make a mess of our file here. Um, we'll just put some spaces there. And you could just save it, and I have auto format, but I'll get into that in a second. Uh, what you can do is you have access to Lua, uh, like the actual vim lsp command. So we'll do vim.lsp and you can start, you know, tab completing lsp. Um, and then we're going to do, we want buff and then dot formatting, and then you're gonna call it as a function. So you're gonna to wanna to put those parentheses there. I'll run that, there you go, we can format. Um, I actually built a wrapper on top of it. I built a wrapper on top of a lot of the LSP stuff here that you can see. Um, I think I have one called formatting in here somewhere. Yeah, formatting, right? So that'll basically do the same exact thing. Now, if you wanna do it on save, there's of course a little bit more that you're gonna to have to do. You're gonna to have to add this auto command over here um, just to like some vim file somewhere. So I have that in lspconfig.vim. You can see I'm sourcing this file, lspconfig.vim. And I'm doing it for Lua, um, JS, and J obviously JSX. Um, they have formatting built into their language server. So you don't need to do anything special. Python, you're actually gonna to need to do something special and I'll probably set that up in the future if you wanna use like black or if you wanna use uh, Yappa for uh, auto pep eight or something like that. Now Lua, um, you just can put this now. Now if you have this without um, installing the, without setting up what I just set up for the EFM language server and all, then you're just gonna throw an error if you have this. So you're just, you wanna make sure that you have that thing set up. I mean, it won't really do anything, but you know, you'll be seeing an error and this won't work right. Uh, yeah, but if you stuck with through, you know, if you stuck through all that stuff, if you stuck with me through all that, then you should have all of the autocomplete diagnostics, hover support, the Vim Global, um, the formatting, auto format, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for setting this up. It's kind of painful, but it's, you know, not the end of the world. And with the new Lua support that's kind of coming and all the new Lua stuff that's coming to NeoVim, I just figured this would be a pretty, um, you know, uh, prescient video to make. Um, now, also, here's some links to the language server, to Lua Rocks and the formatter if you wanna go check those out. Um, I'll be posting this stuff, like I'll be posting all of these blogs and my videos. If you wanna find them, you can find them on Twitter. Uh, you can check out my GitHub for this config. Like if you wanna actually see how I have it all set up, you can just click on NVim and you can go through my whole config here. Um, let's see what else. Obviously, you can check me out on YouTube. If you have questions, you can come uh, ask questions in the Discord. There's like 700 people in there. Some of them are pretty helpful. Um, and you can support me on Patreon if you want to. That's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.